everybody's excited. Why Wednesdays is back. I mean, what a great day to be alive. Malachi Brown, he's got a good block from Wyatt Pelicano. Brown, a first down and more, and out of bounds inside the 20-yard line. Shepard with the well-executed swing pass. Oh, never ordered Chipotle online either. Oh, no, you don't do that. That's a, that is a cardinal sin. You are asking to get ripped off. It's a Wyatt Wednesday. It's a great day to be alive. Nick Fersley, Colin McLaughlin, and now Wyatt Pelicano on the Sports Mix. Wyatt, how are you today? I am absolutely fantastic. It is a beautiful Wednesday afternoon in Shepherdstown, and it's game week once again. So, I mean, what else is there to say? Yeah, and you guys are coming off of a win over Shippensburg, one of your big rivals. So just, I guess, give us your thoughts on that game. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, that's a it's an important game to us, um, and it's definitely an important game to them. There's uh, not a whole lot of love uh, between the two programs, so it's always it's always nice to well, it's always nice to win in general, you know. But uh, definitely over over somebody that doesn't respect or have any love for our program, it's it's nice it's nice to win, you know. So that's that's definitely how we're feeling. And there's always stuff to get better at and work on, but we're we're definitely happy with the results. Why in another close game, what do you think was the difference maker to have Shepard edge out Chippensburg and get the win? Um, I don't know. It's hard to it's hard to pick any one moment. Uh I think I think it was a solid team win. I think it was all three phases that helped get the job done. Um I think we, we made the plays on offense that we needed to make and the defense made the stops that they needed to. And I mean, even if there, there's always obviously mistakes, you never, it's very, uh, very, very rare that you're going to find a, a good or even close to perfect game. Um, so I mean, it, it's, it's very easy to turn on that film and find the mistakes that you want to find. Uh, but I don't know. It's hard to pick any one play. I, I really do think that that was a, that was a team win for us over Shippensbury last week. And Wyatt, one thing I think I noticed just thinking back on the game was, we knew heading into the game that there was the talk about the turnovers and you guys had to cut down on them and you were able to do that. But also I felt like Malachi Brown, Nazir Russell, and Jordan Barnett all really ran with a lot of confidence. Um, how did you feel as an offensive lineman blocking for those guys and what they were able to do on Saturday? Yeah, I, it's it's always great when you can mix it up. You know, it's always comforting as an O-lineman when you know that you'd have not just one dude but multiple dudes who can uh, carry the rock and, and, and do the right things, make the right decisions. Uh, and I, I have a lot of confidence in all three of those guys. And, uh, yeah, I mean, Nas, Nas got his flowers. You know, he got in the box, and that's awesome. Um, so it was really cool. And I think that they played a, a hell of a game, all three of them. And it was great to see, uh, you know, Mal come back off of a, maybe a difficult loss to Kutztown and, and do what he did. So, yeah, man, it, it's it's a whole lot. It's a whole, it's really it's really uh, encouraging as an O lineman to know that the dudes behind us are are also just as locked in and, and doing what they can to get the job done. What was the grade or the recap for you and the offensive line at the end of the game? Can you say that one more time? Uh, just kind of what was the feedback that you guys got on an offensive line perspective after the game? What yeah, were your yeah. coaches telling you so guys? It's, uh, I mean, we, like I said, we always, there's always stuff to get better at. You know, we, we played a pretty good game. Um, we got a lot of, we had a solid rushing game, which we've been waiting on. You know, we finally broke one, which we have been waiting on. So uh, that was all good stuff. But we definitely have things that need to be fixed. You know, you're never, you're never perfect. So we got to just keep working nose to the grindstone, the whole deal. Uh, and that's kind of our feedback almost every week. You know, it doesn't matter, good day, bad day, whatever it was, we got to we gotta bury it and keep working to get better. Um, but, I, I mean, I think we had a solid game. I'm definitely, I'm definitely proud of, of our guys up front uh, on both sides of the ball. But, yeah, on offense for sure, uh, I, think, I think we did a good job moving the rock. Pretty decent job pass protecting, but we definitely we got to be better. We gave up too many sacks. Um, but outside of that, I thought it was a good day. And why at Lockhaven this week, a team that you guys have dominated the last two uh, years and possibly more than that. Um, but how do you, I guess, heading into a week, knowing that this has been an opponent that's struggled against you guys a lot, not try to overlook them and not try to think so much about 
who you're playing, but more so just what you guys have to do to get a win? Yeah, uh, well, I mean, the big thing for us is it's us versus us, you know, so it's it, that's how it's always been. Uh, you're, you're fighting the man in the mirror constantly. That's just that's how it has to be. If you're looking at it any other way, then you're probably not going to find the success that you want. Um, but that said, I mean, Lockhaven historically has – has had some problems for sure, and we've beat up on them a couple times in the past. But, I mean, uh, I think we're taking them way more seriously this year than we ever have before. I mean, they, they, they are putting together a solid season right now. Uh, their new coach is a dude that we, we have respect for as a program. You know, he's and he's turning things around. They got some dudes in the portal, some, some transfer guys that are putting good things on tape, and they beat Millersville last week. So they have our respect. Um, we're treating this just as just as we would any other game week. Uh, there's no, there's no. We're doing everything we can to not let people slack off or try to try to think that this is going to be a, a free game because it's not. And just like every other team in the PSAC, Lockhaven has got us circled on their calendars trying to get their revenge, just like everybody else. So we got to be ready for that too. Anything specifically that jumps out to you in film study about this Lockhaven team this year? Um, yeah, so. Number two is their guy, is what it seems like. You know, he's a Penn State transfer. Uh, he's, he's talented. He can move fast. He's got some power to him, but the main thing is that he's twitched up. Uh, he's got a pretty solid mind for the game. He knows how to read gaps and fill gaps very well. Uh, so that's, that's really what we're seeing a lot of. But, I mean, like I said, they're play, they play very well together. They're, they're a well-coached team. Um, they have some, some interesting things schematically that are, that they put in place to try to throw us off as an offensive line and as like a, as a box, like with how they line up and stuff. But it's really nothing, uh, nothing that we can't handle for sure. And it's nothing that we haven't trained and practiced for. So we, 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 I mean, it's Shepherd University, you know, we, we anticipate the win. We expect the win. That's what we're all about. Um, so, but yeah, they definitely have, it's going to be a good team that we're playing on Saturday. What are you seeing in terms of uh, common fronts that they look to go to and, and stuff like that? Uh, they show a lot of four down, but like I said, they, they're, they're pretty smart schematically. You know, they move people around. It kind of uh, reminds me of, like, how Cal does it a little bit with how they move people around in the box. It's not a lot of traditional fronts. It's a lot of, like, bastardized versions of the 4-2 that they like to use. They, they take the three techs, split them out into a five, split them out into a four. They'll take the two eye and throw them down into a shade. Just moving and playing with the alignments, try to throw us off and pull our eyes away from what we're trying to do, which is effective. You know, it's a very – it's a smart method of coaching, in my opinion. I think that it's a, it's a good way to approach it. But, uh, I mean, we just got to trust what we've been taught, stick to our rules, and, and it shouldn't be, shouldn't be a overcomplication. Looking at the forecast for this weekend's game at Lockhaven, looks like a chance of rain before kickoff uh, for a majority of the day, even maybe around kickoff. What, as a team, do you guys do to prepare for weather conditions? Yeah, I mean, my man James Bell, he's definitely going to cover cover the footballs in water, make sure he doesn't miss any snaps if it's raining. That's something that he does. I know Coach Wright does the same thing. Coach Wright will leave the stand next to the uh, – kickers when they're kicking and take a Gatorade bottle and spray them in the face while they're trying to, while they're trying to kick the ball. So, uh, we have, we have methods to try to recreate it. Uh, we're going to do what we can to prepare the right way. Um, but uh, we, we try not to let, we try not to let outside factors dictate how we, how we play the game. Is that kind of, I mean, obviously it does, you know, make some sort of impact in terms of the ball's wet. So it's going to be slicker, but is it something similar to, like, if you make it a bigger problem than it is, then it becomes a bigger problem than it really is? Yeah, I think so. To me, to me, the rain is just, uh, it's like the, the there's little things that you change, right? Like the wide receivers take the gloves off because having wet gloves is way worse than having wet hands as far as grip and catching. Um, you know, you'll see some of the skill guys tape their fingertips help them get a little dig on the ball so they don't lose it, stuff like that. But, uh, I mean, unless it's a torrential downpour, I feel like you really, yeah, like that's a great way to put it. You don't want to overcomplicate it. You know, you don't want to let it take it out of your comfort zone. We've been practicing a certain way to prepare for this game all week. So if we just let a little drizzle change our whole game plan, well, then we're probably not going to be prepped to run the new game plan of whatever we're changing it to. You know, so I, I think it, that is a huge part of it is just, 
be prepared to execute anyway because, honestly, I mean, the ball's a little slicker, but we're, we're a pretty balanced team, so we should be able to adjust on the fly to whether we got to throw or run more. And to me, the rain is the same as any other factor that could change that. All right, Wyatt, I think that pretty much wraps it up on the game. Switch over to some fun outside of the uh, box questions. And my first one for you, it kind of get the inspiration from the NFL for me. And something that I heard on CBS Sports was a question asked, asked out to people. And that is, since you see now the big relationship in the NFL between Travis Kelsey and Taylor Swift, you can choose one celebrity to come to your games, who do you want that to be? Cheering you on want, on the side. I already know. I, I already know exactly who it is. And then a lot of people might not know who this is, and that's fine. Uh, but I want Action Bronson. He's a he's a rapper, artist, chef, whatever you want to call him. He's a creative type. I love some of his music. Uh, but I just honestly, more than that, I love the energy he brings. He's just he's just one of us. You know, and when I say that, I'm speaking from like a O line perspective. Just a big bearded dude that loves being aggressive and throwing things around. I'm all for that, and I would love. I feel like having him. I, I wouldn't want him up in the box. I want him down on the sideline swinging a hammer, doing crazy things. You know, so I think that that would just be the most motivating, crazy thing to, to look and see on the sideline, and it would just get everybody turned up. So that would be my that would be my pick for sure. So the complete opposite of Taylor Swift. The complete opposite. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't need. I don't need. Uh, some pretty faced singing woman to to motivate me. I need. I want. I want to see something crazy happening. <laughs> Wyatt, um, is there like an offensive lineman that you like to watch that plays in the NFL that maybe you try to take some of his techniques from, or just in general? How much I guess do you watch NFL? Yeah, tape? absolutely. If I had to, if I had to pick one, I'd say Jason Kelsey, which is obviously funny because. We were just talking about Travis, but yeah, I think I think Jason's a great like. If you look at him, he's he's undersized for the NFL, and if I was to ever try to make it to that level, that would be around the same height where I'm at. So when I look at when I think about like when I start having problems looking at dudes that I'm playing against that might have me outsized or outmeasured and everything like that, I try to watch his tape to see how he overcomes a lot of those problems because he's doing the same thing. I mean, everybody he blocks has him outsized and out leveraged. So the way he does it is, is crazy to me, and I, I, it's fascinating. It's enjoyable to watch. Uh, I think he's one of the best to do it right now in the league, and, the way, and doing it at the height and weight that he does it at is just miraculous to me. So, yeah, that's definitely – that's it. if I had to pick somebody I would try to modulate my play off of, it would definitely be Jason Kelsey. And then the next one to kind of follow up on that, I guess um... – I don't know if linemen really think about this because I can remember as a kid, you know, you kind of just took whatever jersey fits you. But um, is there any reason for the number 70? Yeah, actually, there is. Um, there's there's a couple reasons. Um, the first one is that was my pops' number when he played football back in the day. Uh, he played at Wesley College way back. Uh, and, I mean, his career probably wasn't the same as I want mine to be. So, I don't know if it's so much for that, but there's just, I mean, there's, there's a family tie to it for me. So that matters. That's always important to me. Um, and then the other thing that I've always loved about it is if you actually take the 70 and flip it upside down, it's OL, which is the offensive line. So I love that too, because that's, that's the O-line pride, baby. That's what we're all about. So those are the, those are my two reasons. All right. All right. Well, I appreciate the time and uh, see you and good luck on Saturday.